Learning Computer Science with Paul Ellsworth, an instructional video series. Okay, let's pick up where we left off from on instance variables, set methods, and get methods, the setters and getters. When a method that specifies return type other than void completes its task, the method returns the result to its calling method. Method set course name and get course name each use variable course name even though it was not declared in any of the methods. Can use an instance variable of the class in each of the class's methods. Exception to this is static methods. The order in which methods are declared in a class does not determine when they are called at execution time. One method of a class can call another method of the same class by just uh, using the method name. Unlike local variables, which are not automatically initialized, every field has a default initial value, a value provided by Java when you do not specif specify that a field's initial value. Fields are not required to be explicitly initialized before they are used in a program, unless they must be initialized to values other than the default values. The default values of a field type string is null. Usually I uh, set all my uh, values to an initial value. Okay. Here, my gradebook dot get course name. This one is going to call out the method get course name, which is going to uh, return the uh, value of of the course name. And of course, that's in, embedded inside a system dot out print uh, statement. So it'll, uh, it'll be returned and then just printed to the screen. And then below that is my gradebook dot set course name. Uh, they've read the name in and they're going to pass the name to the uh, setter. And so it's going to be uh, written into the uh, object. And then here, uh, my gradebook uh, dot display message will print out the uh, name. Set and get methods. A class private fields can be manipulated only by the class methods. A client of an object calls the class public methods to manipulate the private fields of an object of the class. Classes off, uh, often provide public methods to allow clients to set, assign values to, or get, obtain values of private instant variables. The name of these methods need not begin with set or get, but this is the naming convention that is recommended. A model of instance variable course name as an attribute in the middle compartment of the class, the UML represents the instant variables as attributes by listing the attribute name, followed by a colon and the attribute type. A uh, minus sign access modifier corresponds to access modifier private. In other words, it's not publicly available to use. So you can see here we have a uh, set course name get course name, display message, and these are all publicly available to us. Primitive types versus reference types. Types are divided into primitive types and reference types. The primitive types are boolean, byte, char, short, int, long, float, and double. All non-primitive types are reference types. A primitive type variable can store exactly one value of its declared type at a time. Primitive type instance variables are initialized by default. Variables of type byte, char, short, int, long, float, double are initialized to zero, and variables of type boolean are initialized to false. You can specify your own initial 
uh, values for primitive type variable by assigning the variable a value at its declaration. An attempt to use an uninitialized local variable causes a compilation error. Um, programs use variables of reference types, normally called references, to store the location of objects in the computer memory. Such a variable is said to refer to an object in, in the program. This would be like in the C language, C++ language would be pointers. Objects that are referenced may each contain many instance variables and methods. Reference type instant variables are initialized by default to the value null, a reserved word that represents a reference uh, to nothing. When using an object of another class, a reference to the object is required to invoke or call its methods, also known as sending message to an object. A variable declared type, int, double, or grade book, indicates whether the variable is of primitive or reference type. If a variable's type is not one of the eight primitive types, then it is a reference type. Initialing objects with constructors. When an object of a class is created, its instance variables are initialized by default. Each class can provide a constructor that initializes an object of a class when the object is created. Java requires a constructor call for every, every object that is created. Keywords new requests memory from the system to store an object, then calls the corresponding class constructor to initialize the object. A constructor must have the same name as the class. By default, the compiler provides a default constructor with no parameters in any class that does not explicitly include a constructor. Instant variables are initialized to their default values. Can provide your own constructor to specify custom initialization for objects of your class. A constructor's parameter list specifies that data it requires to perform its tasks. Constructors cannot return values, so they cannot specify a return type. Normally, constructors are declared public. If you declare any constructor for a class, the Java compiler will not create a default constructor for the class. And here we have a uh, constructor that initializes course name to the specific value. Here we have uh, gradebook one, and we also have gradebook two. Class instance creation expression initializing the gradebook and returns a reference that is assigned to variable gradebook one. And then class instance create expression initializing the gradebook and returns a reference that is assigned to the variable uh, gradebook one. So gradebook one, course name is CS101, Introduction to Java Programming. Gradebook two, course name is CS102, Data Structures in Java. Unless default initialization of your class instance variable is acceptable, provide a constructor to ensure that your class instance variables are properly initialized with meaningful values when each of your new objects of your class is created. Uh, for example, uh, variables like integer type are default to a, a value of zero. If you happen to be doing uh, an operation where you're going to be doing division, and division by zero will generate a runtime error, you may want to uh, do your own initialization to set it to some other valuable value such as one. The UML class uh, diagram models class gradebook which has a constructor that has a name parameter of type string. And we can see that here. <clears throat> like operations, the UML model constructor in the third compartment of a class is a class diagram. To distinguish this cons constructor, the UML requires that the word constructor be placed between gulamits 
before the constructor's name. List constructors before other operations in the third compartment. Floating point number is in type double. Floating point number, a number with a decimal point such as 7.33, 0 0.0975, or 1000.12345. Float in double primitive types. Double variables can store numbers with large magnitudes and finer detail than float uh, variables. Float represents single precision floating point numbers up to seven significant digits. Double represents double precision floating point numbers that require twice as much memory as float and provides 15 significant digits, approximately double the precision of float variables. I usually uh, you always use uh, double, uh, rarely do I ever use uh, a float in any of my programs. Um, the only place I can think of where you would want to use float is if you have very large arrays and you're using a significant amount of memory, um, double is going to use double the amount of memory. So in a case like that, if float will work, you might want to use uh, float. But for most of the variables that I create, um, double is just fine. Uh, uh, Java treats all floating point literals such as 7.33 and 0 0.0975 as double values by default. Using floating point numbers in a manner that assumes that they are represented precisely can lead to inc incorrect results. So if you're doing uh, conditionals, um, you have to do it as a range rather than a specific value because if you're expecting a value of 1.4, it might actually have a value of 1.4.0. Or on the other hand, it could be a value of 1.399999. So you have to range check it. Usually we try to use integers if we can. However, there may be occasions where you need to use a floating point. So uh, remember to range check it. And we have a program here with a floating point declaration for account balance. Uh, one of the things with money and using uh, floating point is that you can get a round off error. So one of the tricks that's often used is to convert uh, dollar amounts to really pennies. Do all the calculations as integers using pennies. And then at the time that you're presenting the printing the results, then you convert it back into a floating point. Okay. Uh, floating point numbers and type double continued. Uh, we can use the uh, printf and use format specifier, for example, percent dot two f. The percent f is used to output values of type float or double. The point two represents the number of decimal places to output to the right of the decimal point, known as the number's precision. Uh, any floating point value output with a percent dot two f will be rounded to the hundredths position. Scanner method next double returns the double value entered by the user. And they give you an example here. Okay, here we have a UML class diagram in NK, and the class account has a private balance attribute of UML type double. And notice that the minus sign over here indicates that it's private. A constructor uh, with a parameter type double and two public operations, credit and get balance.
Okay, this brings us to the end of what I want to cover from this uh, section. And so I will sign off.